The Olympics are a venue to foster sportsmanship and goodwill among nations. But just as one country hoped hosting the Games would help it emerge from its dark past, that nation's Olympic Games led to terror and scandal. Off the underside of the backboard. Now, Ali. Yo! An international competition features different faces and flags, separated by cultures and sometimes competing political agendas. But we can all appreciate the beauty of athleticism. Even as one rises to gold, we all can rejoice in the spirit of sportsmanship until life reminds us there are more important things than games. Tom McMillan of the University of Maryland is a 6'11 forward. Those Olympics in particular were very calamitous. When the American basketball team faces the Soviets in an Olympic game that starts at midnight. It was bigger than basketball. It was a Cold War back then, and here we have 50 years later another Cold War. Hitler gathered around him, misfits like himself, people obsessed with grievances, real or imaginary. As Hitler reigns over the Third Reich, he also presides over the 1936 Olympics. Journalist David Sweet. And those Olympics were very militaristic. A lot of Nazi propaganda was going on around those Olympics, so they weren't seen in a positive light by the world. In 1972, the Olympics returned to Germany. It gets a chance to show the world a new peaceful nation but it all goes horribly wrong september 5th 4 a.m palestinian terrorists attack the compound where israeli athletes are staying they went into the israeli rooms and there were fights breaking out and israelis trying to escape basically by the end of the morning two israeli athletes were killed and the Palestinians had nine Israeli athletes and coaches held hostage. Those nine Israelis went to the airport. The Palestinian terrorists thought there was an airplane waiting for them where they could take off to freedom, but instead there was a firefight at the airport, and the uh, Palestinians made sure the rest of the hostages were killed during this firefight. The whole world was watching this on TV all day. After a firefight at the airport, 11 Israeli athletes and coaches are killed, along with the Munich police officer and five terrorists. It was the worst case scenario for Germany because innocent Jewish citizens were killed on German soil. The games of peace and joy were quickly transformed into something else. And we had to practice that day and I remember it was sobering to go practice. Many of us felt well maybe the Olympics should be canceled. But Olympic officials decide the games must go on canceling the Olympics would have forever marred the Olympics because they would always be vulnerable to terrorist attacks. The American players are good, but not what you'd call the dream teams we've come to know in more recent Olympics. The 1972 team includes future NBA All-Stars like Doug Collins and Bobby Jones. The rest, journeymen and role players, are the youngest team in Olympic history. They were college kids who were, the team was put together a few months before the Olympic Games, and uh, they would still be able to beat the Soviet Union, which was a, basically a professional team that played all the time together. One game leads to one of the biggest controversies in sports history. During the game, the younger Americans struggle against the more experienced Soviets. They were sloppy, they were just not in sync. They were down by one with 10 seconds to go and the Soviets had the ball and they didn't have to shoot. Soviet player passed the ball and Doug Collins came over and grabbed that pass, intercepted it, and it went all the way down the court, laid the ball up. Well, he got knocked down uh, going to a layup and he got fouled and those were shots watched around the world. Those were probably two of the most pressurized free throws and he's been knocked down hard and he gets up there and hits both of those free throws without even flinching it was really an incredible display of his talent and his you know grace under pressure so the u.s was up 50 to 49 three seconds left in the game it looked like another gold medal would be in their pockets 
The Soviets inbound and with one second left, call a timeout. That's when the head of international basketball, R. William Jones, comes out of the stands and demands the game officials change the clock to show three seconds remaining. It's something that we can't imagine happening in U.S. sports. With a new three seconds, the Soviets inbound the ball again. A player shoots and misses. Three seconds has elapsed and the players are going crazy. They're celebrating. It's pandemonium on the court and they couldn't be happier because, you know, they barely escaped losing this game. So our William Jones comes down again and he said the uh, scoreboard had not been set correctly. That play didn't count. Another three seconds to play. So here they go on the third time. I'm on the ball again under their basket and they're throwing it the length, which we knew they were going to do, and I'm guarding it. And Alexander Veloff, one of their star players, was down there. He was two feet away from the basket. He put it up, banked it in. The Soviets win 51-50. No more time was put on the clock. I call it the most controversial finish in sports history. So what's Jones' motivation to interfere? So this could only help our William Jones in terms of making international basketball more popular. Right after the game, he said the U.S. has to learn to lose once. A young American jets off to Europe for the first time, thrilled to meet Olympia. Sweet details the drama in his book, Three Seconds in Munich. To this day, the players have refused to accept their silver medals, and two players have written in their wills that no descendants can accept it either. Those medals should be somewhere on display so you, we can talk about the history of how politics and sports are so intertwined. This is a moment in history, uh, as I said. It's not just a basketball game. It's a matter when countries were warring and it just carried over to the sporting field. And that's really the history of that game. Sweet says only seven of 12 silver medals still exist. No one knows what happened to the other five. Three terrorists survived and were arrested, but were later freed in exchange for hostages on Lufthansa airline that had been hijacked by Palestinian terrorists. Two of those freed terrorists from the Olympics were later killed, allegedly by Israeli agents. Only one is alive, believed to be in hiding.